India's economy getting to where it is now being the fifth largest economy, which are now going to be the big focus areas for you to move India from being the fifth largest economy further up the ladder, maybe to the third, uh, because in power purchase parity, we already are the third. Clearly, we're headed for growth, bigger growth than most others uh, at this moment, and that is quite clear. Uh, but the question will be about the balance within the economy, which portions get more attention and which ones get moderated, uh, because a challenge has been thrown out by the Prime Minister for India to be a developed nation by uh, time we turn 100. And I think it's a wonderful way to look at India. So where is your big focus going to be now? I think the driver would be engaging the youth power. So sectors which have great potential for engaging them, and when I say youth, I mean youth with all sets of skills. You can start from the bottom to the top, which uh, speaks about frontier technology related skills, innovative skills, or uh, STEM science skills, or it can just be very, uh, you know, at the bottom, uh, skilled, not so skilled workers. So when you're planning for the Indian economy for the next 25 years, which we are calling Amritkal and PMS highlighted champion sectors will be the ones with which we start off. But the first test, litmus test would be how would it benefit the workforce? Some at the leadership level and some at the bottom, or some in the middle. But people come out of universities, colleges, schools, with different sets of skills, all of them need prospects for the future. And in that prospect is where the next 25 years is going to be geared. So that will be the testing measure. But otherwise, of course, I will stretch the argument a bit more, not so much to make it a, a tenuous argument, but it is a fact that three, four years ago, when in Davos all of us heard Industrial Revolution 4.0, Web3, IoT, artificial intelligence. I'm happy to say that India in the last three, four years has actually built its capacities on these. Today, if India is showing the way on digital payments, digital you know, um, influence into your medical practice, setting up of 75 digital derived centers of learning, setting up of 75 digital banking. 75 is because we want to also remember that it happened in the 75th year of independence. The digitization, the rapid influence of digitization, even in areas like agriculture. So we've shown the way since after what we heard in uh, Davos. So that is, I think, the kind of direction, move it more towards digitization even more, and also make sure the workforce participation is at its maximum. So let me take two comments, two of the things you mentioned. One is labor policy. How do we get more people sustainable economic opportunities? How do we ensure that the system is fair and encouraging of uh, jobs because we have had this challenge it's probably the single biggest challenge for us as a nation is to ensure the standard of living for all Indians mm -hmm. and, and I would imagine more than anything else that's one thing we have to address but of course we have to address it through growth that's the only positive way to do this so is there a tweak or a change required in our policy to encourage more uh, hiring and better compensation and better work conditions? Well, if I take the example of the PLI, the Productivity Lin Linked Incentive yeah. Scheme, one of the things was, as much as we looked at every addition to the production, every unit in addition that you produce, and at that scale, we were also looking at what will be the impact on our labor force. And when we are talking about MSMEs, that's large, but when we are talking about MSMEs on the other end of the spectrum, we are looking at in-situ solutions for MSMEs who have 
uh, wherever they are because locally they are the ones who give training they are the ones who are going to be able to employ locally as much as collectively if you think as the uh, large scale units so the policy has necessarily underlined the importance of labor and engagement of labor and that's where we think we are pushing technology digitalization as much as we are pushing opportunities for work yeah, you're right we will need to work on both ends on the top end we need to become global leaders for sure there's, there's not even an option for many of our sectors and we have some big leaders here sitting here who run global companies uh, who have demonstrated what india can do indians themselves have already led so many global enterprises so individual capability is not an issue so it is probably the, the tweak that's required systemic is also uh, in the in the work environment i think on both the other comment you made or, or let me stick to pli for a moment chinese companies have gone and done things in manufacturing without fear of actually having made losses because it in one way or the other gets made up by the government system whether it's through hidden subsidies or through uh, loans which continue to be uh, non performing loans uh, as you know their percentage of non performing loans is about the highest in the world and uh, do you believe the pli will compensate enough for a whole variety of indian businesses now to be globally leading because it has to be globally competitive first to become globally leading uh, do you think that scheme because it's the result is yet to be seen we've only got one company that's been uh, uh, currently uh, cleared for for the scheme hopefully many more will uh, will get cleared in the coming uh, weeks and months is that enough or is there other things we need to do to remove some of this fear people had of getting into manufacturing over the last decade or so we saw a little bit of a climb then we saw a bit of a decline as you know now and it is necessary we of course service is wonderful but we cannot only be a services nation we have to have a good spirit of agriculture services and manufacturing you're right in saying we'll have to see how it goes on the pli because only one has come and so on but equally i'm hearing a lot more companies who are moving out of china wanting to come because they they find the policies a lot more attractive not just the pli but overall the ecosystem is now far more um, facilitative of uh, uh, such companies coming out to locate themselves in india if that is one of the things the second i think no policy can be the end to itself it's not as if we've given a solution and that's the end of the story it keeps evolving as we go on so that applies even to um, those uh, industries which are coming into the sunrise sector for which we've given the policy support through an incentive but uh, i if it's not sort of um, impertinent to say this now i equally would want to know from the indian industry what is it that they are hesitant about even further since 2019 when i've taken charge of the finance ministry i've been hearing though the industry doesn't think it's conducive all right bring the rate down all right tax rate was brought down and i keep defending industry private sector where even provocatively people have asked what would you want to tell the private sector we will do everything to get industry coming and investing here give pli we've given pli i want to hear from the indian inc what's stopping you when countries and industries abroad think this is the place to be in now at this time fdis are coming fpis are coming it's all the stock market is so confident indian retail investor believes in them is is it like hanuman you don't believe in your own capacity in your own strength and uh, has they got to be somebody you know standing next and say hey you are anuman do it and who's that uh, person who's going to tell the hanuman that can't suddenly be the government maybe that's a role you have as well 